I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself right now, man, he's taking glasses, sunglasses, to the next level. Where can I get a pair of them shades? Them look super cool, man, super fly. But are they practical? Would I even be able to wear them properly and actually block out the sun? Well, I'm here to answer that question, and the answer is 100% no. These are probably the worst sunglasses I wore since those deal with it pixelated glasses. Yeah, seriously. Uh, these do not rest properly on my face, and though they make me look awesome, in my own opinion, if I do say so myself, they are extremely impractical, and I will probably never wear them out of the house. Jumping into another episode of What You Miss News, we're going to start off with me letting you know that the Nintendo Switch giveaway is still going on. All you have to do is be subscribed, like, and share my videos, and drop a comment. I declare a winner every 15th of each month, and you could be the proud owner of another Nintendo Switch giveaway from yours truly ladies and gentlemen I'll even sign it for you if you'd like first up I want to let everyone know that there's an awesome offer on humble bundle for uh, Grand Theft Auto games along with several other Rockstar games like Manhunt Bully Max Payne Max Payne 2 and 3 and then of course LA Noir and the DLC that comes with LA Noir now in order to get all of these games you do have to pay $15 but if you would just like to get a taste of the old Grand Theft Auto series that includes Vice City you only have to pay $1 and if you'd like some of the more newer modern games like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Bully, the base game of L.A. Noir, and Max Payne 2, that'll be around $10, $9.75. And then the $15 will get you GTA 4, uh, Liberty City Stories, Max Payne 3, and the DLC for L.A. Noir, and all the aforementioned games as well on lower tiers. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Humble Bundle is a really great spot for PC gamers. I'm going to drop my affiliate link down below. If you sign up for Humble Monthly, that's a really great thing to get also. It includes a lot of great games monthly. They almost always beat PS Plus and the Xbox offers for monthly games that you get for their subscription service. Humble Bundle, you're doing great. You're donating to charity and you're getting video games cheap. I can't uh, extol their greatness any more than I already am, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to you if you want to donate and get some video games for your PC. A lot of these Grand Theft Auto games run on low-end PCs anyways, so it's really, really good news. Now, jumping from PC gaming, we're going to be going into Nintendo. Nintendo is printing money. Profits up 261%. If you're going to be buying any stocks, and I mean real stocks, not partial stocks, I mean serious like dropping a minimum of $500 on stocks, go buy Nintendo because man, wow. Uh, Nintendo introduced cardboard and their stocks went up. I can't believe it. The console wars have brewed down to Nintendo selling cardboard and winning. Now I'm not throwing shade at Nintendo. The Nintendo Labo idea is a novel idea, but it's still quite funny when you just say it like that, isn't it? There's a reason I'm not going into this article, though, because the next article is from Polygon. The Nintendo Switch is setting sales records, but guess what? It could have done better! Hey, you heard that? You heard that being the fastest selling game console in America. I, I, eclipsing the N Nintendo Wii U. I mean, it's just not good enough, man. You could have done better! What is this, Polygon? Oh, yeah, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely it is Polygon. And it's it's funny. It's ironic. Because basically what this article brews down to is that some places they couldn't get enough Nintendo Switches in to actually have people buy the Nintendo Switches. I live close to a city with a population of around 55,000 with the surrounding small cities, villages, and towns. It goes up to around 200,000 people in a giant circular 45 minute radius. All right, that's the region I live in. And um, if I go into any number of the big stores, Walmarts, uh, Best Buy, I can find a Nintendo Switch. There's rarely been opportunities where I couldn't find a Nintendo Switch. So this article, for me, is at least crap. And, and it is it is pretty uh, a pretty crappy article anyways, because all it's saying is that um, Nintendo needs to get better on stocking their stuff. 
That's literally the extent of it. Now, the reason I bring this up is it's so funny because I responded to this tweet and I, I said, it's funny how even small YouTubers are getting more attention than Polygon. And I did hashtag what you missed and I did a Palpatine, it's ironic GIF. That has 27 likes on it, that tweet does. And if you go over to Polygon's article here, it has 23 comments. I effectively am more popular on a Twitter reply than Polygon and its own articles. This leads me to speculate that Polygon is literally reaching and fishing for any amount of views and attention that they could possibly get because the Nintendo Switch is a hot topic. But that's not where the Nintendo train ends, ladies and gentlemen, because Nintendo and Illumination are partnering on a movie starring Mario that is co-produced by Shigeru Miyamoto. Seriously, we heard news about this, that there was going to be a Mario movie and it was going to be produced by the same company that does the Minion movies, okay? Now, on one hand, people are going to cringe and say, oh god, Minions, oh god, but the animation is very, very well done. And if it doesn't take any of the script writing and how they do the jokes in Minions, I think it'll be okay. At least we know it'll look really nice. Now, with Shigeru Miyamoto there, there's no questioning that this is going to be an awesome Mario movie. One other thing that's very interesting is that Nintendo of America tweeted out saying that the checkered flag has been raised to the finish line is near. A mobile application is now in development. Mario Kart Tour, hashtag Mario Kart Tour, releasing the fiscal year ending of March 2019. So, um, yeah. Uh, uh, recently, there was a there was a tweet also talking about how Nintendo's mobile gaming division wasn't panning out. It wasn't successful. This tweet alone has 21,000 likes and almost 10,000 retweets. This is just Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't even YouTube. This isn't even a YouTube video, but I can almost guarantee you it would be in the millions for views and and tons of likes and shares. I'm telling you, Nintendo are doing great things, and if they keep going like this, they're going to be very, very successful into 2019, 2020. So, something very odd that also came out was the future of Sonic the Hedgehog will be revealed at SXSW. So, this is odd. They stated that um, um, Sonic is going to take 2018 by storm. And that's about it. That's about the extent of this article. So what could it mean when Sega was talking about saying that at the SXSW panel, uh, they're ready to take 2018 by storm? I, I, I don't understand it. Maybe there's a new Sonic game that's going to involve storms. Um, I, I, I really don't know, man. Maybe they really are just physically talking about, hey, we've got some really good ideas and we're going to be producing some really great games. Who knows? But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's um, a nice look into Sega in 2018. And uh, we have several, several articles here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so BioWare's Anthem is officially delayed to 2019. Now, they said and clarified that this was not a delay. Now, I, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but if you have a game that's supposed to come out in 2018 and it, it is pushed back to 2019, that sounds like a delay to me. But what they're saying with that is that it's not a delay because they are intentionally pushing it back due to scheduling conflicts because they were talking about how the Battlefield series is going to be releasing as well and doing something with the Battlefield series. And they do not want to compete with something that is coming out from DICE with Battlefield and Anthem. And they don't want to release them at the same time. Now, this is very, very interesting because EA also talked about a few interesting things. They said that you can't believe the press and everything you read uh, in regards to their company. Yeah. And then they went on to also say and talk about loot boxes, saying that many people misconstrue loot boxes as gambling. And they cited and said that many countries don't perceive loot boxes as gambling. Oh, excuse me, EA! Excuse me, EA! Yeah, many countries don't perceive loot boxes as gambling, uh, but many countries don't even have the freedom of speech. Uh, come on, man. Citing many countries as viewing loot boxes as not gambling is not, not a good 
good way of defending yourself. And on top of that, saying misconstruing loot boxes as gambling. EA, I think, I think you're the ones misunderstanding because when the U.S. government does deem loot boxes as gambling and shuts down your little operation, you're going to be backpedaling a little bit. Oh, we didn't mean to say that. We didn't mean, we actually meant to say, yeah, all right, whatever you say, EA. And this leads into my final story, ladies and gentlemen, which is EA and Star Wars Battlefront to reintroduce microtransactions very, very soon, which is very unfortunate. They said the reason behind this is because they only sold 7 million copies of Battlefront 2, I believe, and their target was 10 to 11 million, and now they have to reintroduce microtransactions and loot boxes in this coming in the coming months. Wow. Okay, Super Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, what did it sell? 9 million? No microtransactions, no loot boxes. What about Monster Hunter World? What about Xenoblade Chronicles 2? Xenoblade Chronicles 2 sold 1 million without loot boxes and anything like that. They didn't need that. They didn't need that to supplement their income. What about other games on other platforms? Just do the math, ladies and gentlemen. This is ridiculous. Oh, that's your excuse? Are you serious? Are you freaking serious, EA, man? I used to respect you, man. I'm telling you, man, you're going down the path of Konami real bad, EA. And I hope you come back from it soon. Oh, man. But, ladies and gentlemen, there is hope at the end of the tunnel. You guys remember when the Xbox One launched? Always online, connect only, stuff like that. Very bad stuff. The gamers outcried. The gamers revolted. And all of it was eventually removed. And the Xbox One is a very nice, viable system these days. All it takes is a company moving in a correct direction. In a better direction than what they were moving in. So, I encourage you all to support EA when they do do things very right and very well. And don't stop hammering the loot box topic. Don't let up just because it's not a hot topic anymore. They're putting it back in Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's ridiculous. Alright, that'll do it for this episode of What You Miss News. Ah, oh, man, I'm, I am I tried to stay calm, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm telling you, man, I need to, I need to go take chill pill. I need to relax. <sighs> Loot boxes are back. I can't believe it. I've been your host, Proto Mario, and I'm signing out. If you enjoyed this episode, leave me a big thumbs up, like, and share it. Everywhere you can, ladies and gentlemen, let's show all these ridiculous websites, these news agencies, that YouTubers, small and big alike, can take them down. And if you dislike this episode, show me some constructive criticism that I can do to make this show better so that I can indeed take those news agencies down and do way better than them. Anyways, I'm off to go lay down in a, a room and uh, take these ridiculous sunglasses off. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. As always, good gaming. God bless. And uh, I hope to see you back here once again.